Greetings, and welcome to Part 2 of Dwarf Fortress for Dummies 2012. If you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. You are not a complete moron. In the first episode, we looked at how to use designations to dig holes and build stairs, how to use stockpiles to organize our items, and how to use building to build workshop. Okay, I can't do this. Alright, let's just keep going. So, where we left off, I showed you guys how to use designations to do some digging, how to make stockpiles, how to build workshops, and all of that stuff. In this episode, I'm going to try not to get mercilessly slaughtered by sea otter men and women and whatever those flying bug women were. And if I survive long enough, hopefully I can teach you a thing or two about some of the more advanced features. So, let's see what we got going on here. So, if you remember from last time, all I really did was I dug down here, I made a carpenter's workshop, I built some stockpiles, and beyond that, not a whole lot else. So, uh, probably the next thing that I'm going to want to do is tell you a couple things to get you in the mindset of how to approach Dwarf Fortress. I didn't cover this in part one, but it's important that you know that Dwarf Fortress has no victory condition. There is no way to win Dwarf Fortress. You can have fun a lot of different ways, and fun is sort of subjective, but there is no way to beat the game, so to speak. So, your mission, though, I guess you can put it, is to survive as long as you can. And in order to do that, you need to think about your dwarves as real individuals. Or, you know, if you ever played a game like The Sims, you could approach it in that mindset. So, I like to use the old American life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness uh, as kind of a guidepost for what your dwarves want, what they need. So, life is kind of a couple things, right? In order to stay alive, your dwarves need food, shelter, uh, booze, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it <laughs> as far as staying alive. And, you know, they need to not get their brain slapped through their skull with an eel tail. Um, for happiness, your dwarves have psychology, right? They have thoughts. Um, certain things will make them unhappy, certain things will make them happy. So one of the things will make them unhappy is hanging around outside too long because dwarves like to be underground, or at the very least they like to be enclosed. So usually one of your first priorities is going to be getting underground. As far as liberty, that one doesn't really that one doesn't really hold up as much, but you know, obviously, if you were to say accidentally uh, construct a wall around a dwarf and restrain them, they wouldn't like that. That kind of goes into the happiness, but liberty, yeah. All right, that metaphor kind of fell apart. So anyway, um, let's get back to the carpenter's workshop. So I've started building some beds, right? Your dwarves are going to want to sleep. And if I don't have some beds, they're going to end up sleeping outside. And that's probably going to make them unhappy. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set up a little temporary dormitory, which is basically a communal bedroom that they can all kind of hang out and sleep in. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to dig a little room. And you don't have to do this, but it will make things a little easier on you. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little room. Size doesn't really matter. It could be 5x5 five five or whatever you want. Um, big enough to fit a few beds in there and have a little elbow room. So again, I've just used designations. I dug out this room and I'm going to resume the game and my miners are going to come down here and do this. So while this is going, I figure I might as well uh, build a masonry workshop and then I'll dig down a little bit further to get some stone. Now, I can make a door out of wood, but typically speaking, stone is just dwarfier. So, let's do that. So, what I'll do is I'll make this guy. So, since I made this actually up staircase to illustrate my earlier point that you need to kind of think of things in layers, I can't go down from here. I could remove these and uh, construct new up down stairs, but Probably I'll just do this. I'm gonna dig out an area adjacent 
and then I'll make a new set of downstairs next to these and we'll go from there. It's kind of sloppy but you'll get the picture. So from here we're going to dig some downstairs, downward stairway is J, and then on the next level down we'll build an up down staircase which again is sort of a spiral staircase. So this is a looks like a layer of sand. So I'm doing D for designate and I for up down stairway. I'm gonna resume and my dwarves are gonna keep digging down. Now one thing that's a relatively new feature is that you can actually set des designations in three dimensions. And it's gonna seem like uh too deep just because of the way the game is presented, but again, keep in mind that if X is like this, horizontal uh, and Y is straight up and down. When I talk about Z levels, I'm talking about coming straight at your face and going back down into the screen. So that's a third dimension. So here, let me try to illustrate. So what I'm going to do is, this is some silt or clay or whatever here. What I want to do is keep this up-down staircase uh, going down for several more levels. But I don't want to have to do it a level at a time. So what I can actually do is, I can go down to this level, the next one here, I'm going to do D for designate, I'm going to go up down stairway, I, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the upper, upper corner on the top level. I'm going to move down to where I want it to end. And then I'm going to use the pointy bracket to go down a couple of levels before I press enter. Now when I press enter, you can see that on each level that I went down, I made that designation. So I basically did the designation in three dimensions. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, Maybe you should think about it harder. Yeah. So now my guys are getting down here. I'm starting to find some gypsum, some limonite, gems. Oh man, this place is blowing up. All kinds of minerals and gems up in this bitch. Sweet. So, got my dwarves digging down there. Good. So now I've got some stone to work with. I can come up here and I'll build a masonry workshop. I didn't need the stone to build the workshop. I just needed stone before I can make anything with a workshop. So let me go back. I went uh, B for build, W for workshop, and then the hotkey for masons workshop is M. And I'll just build this one right next to the carpenter here. Right there. And we'll make it out of pine logs. Resume. All right. You know, actually, I think, I don't know how much of this stone was building material, so I'm going to dig out a little bit more of this. Looks like that's some limestone there. They don't always uh, leave stone behind when they dig. In earlier versions, they would leave out a lot more, but they've changed that since, so that they leave less stone behind. Okay, um, so... Now when I resume, somebody's going to come build this masonry workshop, hopefully. And uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is construct these beds in this room here and set it up as a dormitory. So what I'm going to do is B for build and then B again for bed. And then I'll just come place all of them in here. So there we go. Remember, each time you build a bed, you're going to have to choose which one. You can cycle between them here with plus and minus to choose one from the list. I don't really care, so I'm just gonna go through and do it as it appears in the list. Alright, so now I've designated these buildings to be built, the beds, and my dwarves are gonna drag them in there. Good. So now, my mason's workshop has been constructed. I can now build a door with, uh, again, Q, this is that building tasks and preferences. I'm going to cursor over the Mason's Workshop, press A to add new task, and then I'm going to come down here and do a door. So when I resume, somebody with masonry is going to come in here and build me a door. Any day now. That's another change in one of the more recent patches. They made stone a lot heavier, or rather it has a more significant effect on your movement speed. 
So you can actually make wheelbarrows and things like that that will let your dwarves move things around quicker. Alright, so now I've got a door. You can see it right there. It just got added to my furniture stockpile. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and build door. So this might be confusing for new players, so let me just reiterate the difference between making building a door at a workshop and building a door that you've already constructed. To build the door at the workshop, again, you have to go Q, set building tasks and preferences. You make a task to build the door. Once you've got the door constructed, then you can install the door, maybe a better way to put it rather than build it, with the B key for building. So now we've got my door. I can come here. There's only one. It's chalk. Doesn't seem like it'd be very solid. Every time you touch it, you get chalk all over your beautiful dwarf suit. Okay, so now there's my door. Okay, so now to turn this into a dormitory, what I have to do is I have to go set building tasks and preferences again with Q. Except this time, instead of interacting with one of the workshops, I'm going to interact with a bed. There's a lot of things that you can interact with with Q that are built. Almost everything that you build, you can interact with with Q. It has something you can do. So I'm probably not going to cover all of them. Well, maybe at some point over the course of the tutorial. But if you if there's anything you're curious about, again, check out the Dwarf Fortress wiki. It's a huge, exhaustive source of information for all of this stuff. So um, let me go back. So now that I press Q and I've got my cursor near this bed, you can see I've got a new option up here, R, for Make Bedroom. I'm going to press that, and then I'm going to have to choose the size of the room. Well, I want the room, I want this designation here to fill up the whole room, so I'm going to go ahead and press plus until it keeps going. Part of the reason I made this door is because the game is smart enough to realize that if there's a door here, you can't make the room bigger when the door is, is there, basically. So if this door wasn't there, these blue X's that are indicating the size of the bedroom would actually spill out. Right, and so dwarves would think that this area right here was part of the bedroom. Well, I don't really want that, it's kind of sloppy, so that's why I put that door there. So now I press enter, and now I've got more options. So I can assign this bed to someone, um, I can press F, that basically removes this designation and makes it just a free bed. Um, I can turn this into a barracks, this is part of the military system, and I'll come back to this at a later point. The military system is pretty convoluted. Uh, D for dormitory. So that, that's what I want to do here. I want to turn this into a dormitory. This is basically going to mean that anyone can come in here and use this. It's just like a communal sleeping area. If you've ever lived in a dorm, you got kind of the right idea. Although hopefully you didn't have any smelly, alcoholic, manic depressive dwarves in your dormitory in college. That would be unfortunate. All right should be all set. So now when I press escape, this is going to be done, and now instead of sleeping out, oops, now instead of sleeping out in the rain, the dwarves will come and sleep in the dormitory. So, speaking of which, my dwarves are still all milling around out here. What I want to do is get them to take all the stuff that was on this, well, it doesn't look like a wagon, but pretend that this is a wagon. It is a wagon. In fact, I can press Q and interact with it. It doesn't say what it is, but I can remove the building and get some wood out of the wagon which I will do eventually. So I want to get everyone to stop hanging, out, hanging around out here. So I want the animals to stay outside and, you know, have a little pasture. And I want all the dwarves to bring all the crap downstairs. So first things first, I'll show you how to set up. Um, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to a new hotkey on here. And I'm going to show you uh, how you can add animals to it. So what I'm going to do is set up a pasture. And the way that you set up a pasture is with the zones hotkey here, I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press I, I'm going to designate an area, and I'll make a largish area, and I'll even have it encompass part of this little pool here so they can get some water. And even though there's no fence, this pasture is basically going to restrict the animals that I assign to it to this area. Eventually I'll make it bigger, but just for now, for illustration purposes. Here's a zone. I haven't told the zone what it's going to be yet, but you can see some of the things I can make the zone. It can be a water source, a fishing area, a garbage dump, pen pasture, pit pond, sand, meeting area, hospital, etc. I want to make it a pen pasture, so I'm going to press N. 
Now I've got this option to set the pen slash pasture information. Now I can go down this list of animals and using enter I can select multiple animals that I want to assign to this pasture. So I don't really care about the dogs and cats running around, in fact I want that because I want them to kill vermin and chase away goblin child snatchers and things like this. So um, I'm going to assign the ewe, which is lamb, female lamb, and all of the hens and the ram and the rooster and the duck, drake, which I believe is a male duck, not a dragon. That would be effing sweet. Turkey, hen, a gobbler, a yak, and a camel. For some reason, I've got a camel. All right, so once I've got them all assigned, and you can tell because they've got this, you know, little green indicators here, you press escape, and then, in theory, if you haven't messed up, your dwarves are going to drag all the animals into the pasture and say, stay. Stay put, you rascally little beasts. So, there's my pasture. Isn't that lovely? Now, I can actually see what's going on here. I've got a wagon laden with some more stuff here. Alright, so now, the next thing, to get all the stuff from the wagon downstairs, what I'll do is I'll set up a couple of stockpiles down here. Um, for one, I'll set up, I've already set up a stockpile for furniture, but I'm going to set up one for food, so that they will take the food in from outside. I'll set that right here. Again, to build a stockpile, it's P for stockpile. And then you define the corners, but first make sure that you choose what kind of stockpile you want to make. Unlike making a zone where you define the zone first and then you press a hotkey to choose what the zone becomes, when you are making a stockpile, you have to do the hotkey for what type of stockpile first. So in this case, food, I have to press F, then I'm going to define the corners like so, and now I've got myself a nice little food stockpile. And dwarves should start bringing things down here. So eventually I would make one of each type of stockpile so that they bring everything down from upstairs. Now, to see what kinds of things you have, if you, um, you know, for instance, you make some stockpiles and you say, oh, well, there's still some stuff out here. What am I missing? What you can do is you can use a new hotkey. I'm throwing hotkeys at you left and right this time. So if you want me to slow down, too bad. Just deal with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Z for status. And then I've got this screen. This is pretty useful. It tells you your fortress population. You can see that I've got seven. Seven is kind of a magic number for dwarves. Um, you get a quick peek, kind of a little top line here for your stores of meat, fish, plants, seeds, drinks, and other. And you can actually use your numpad to switch over to different tabs here. So what I, I want to do right now is go over to stocks. This is going to be essentially what's what it's going to be is an inventory so I can come and see what I have so I've got you know meat and fish and stuff all this is classified as food I've got um, clothes but the clothes are typically going to be on my dwarves so I don't need to make a stockpile for that um, I've got some ammunition might want to make an ammunition stockpile I've got some seeds that's going to go in the food stockpile liquid globs of thing like fat um, and I've got some logs some stones, boxes and bags and things like this. Anyway, this is just a good way to see kind of what you what you have. Oh, like I've got some remains, hamster remains, rat remains, etc. Um, another thing you probably want to do quickly before I forget is go into your kitchen tab and I'm going to get to brewing later. Um, actually, I'll probably get to it in this episode, but for some reason, I don't know if it's with the newer versions, but Typically, plump helmets, which are a mushroom, are set so that you don't cook them. Um, and this is, it's good. You, you, you want to not cook them because they're used in brewing booze. Booze is like the most important commodity in Dwarf Fortress. You never, ever, ever want to run out of alcohol. Your dwarves will be very upset if that happens. So... Um, because this is the most readily available source of booze, once the booze I brought along runs out, um, and I'm going to plant some more of these things, I, I want to just go ahead and set them to not be able to cook. 
So you can see down here I've got some hotkeys, toggle cook and toggle brew. Right now I have plump, plump helmets were set by default to be able to cook and brew. But I want to forbid them from being cooked, so I'm going to press C. Then I just press escape. And there we go. So now uh, my dwarves theoretically shouldn't cook them or eat them. Now they should only be able to be used for brewing. Alright, so uh, where was I? Setting up more stockpiles. So uh, while I'm doing this, speaking of brewing, I'll go ahead and set up the most structure in your uh, most important structure in the fortress, your still or distillery, which is what you're going to use to brew the alcohol. So to build this, again, it's going to be B for building, W for workshop, and then L for still. And I'm going to place it, whoa, I lost control of my cursor. I'll just place it right here next to the dormitory. And then, again, you're going to choose a construction material. It's sorted by distance, so I usually just pick whatever's closest. Or whatever I have the most of, either way. So now somebody is going to come, grab a log from outside, bring it down here, and build me up a still. And there it is. So here, I'm going to add a new task, I'm going to brew a drink, and I'm going to introduce you to a new concept here for these things. Um, instead of manually adding a bunch of these orders to brew drinks, tasks rather, um, what I can do is actually just add it one time and then set it to repeat. And then you get this R here. What that will do is somebody will come here and brew up drinks until they have no more raw materials or no more containers to use to put the drinks in. And it's very possible that I don't have any spare barrels right now, so I might get an error message that says that I don't have a food container. If that's the case, then I can actually just build a new barrel at the carpenter. But we'll see. So, in the meantime, um, I'm going to just make a couple more stockpiles real quick, and actually I will designate a little bit more space to get dug out so that I have more room to work with here. Dig out a little there, and maybe dig out a little up here, just to give myself a little more breathing room here. Okay, so now stockpiles. So I've already got a food stockpile, um, I've already got a furniture storage stockpile. I'm going to go outside real quick and I'm going to build an important stockpile, often overlooked, which is a refuse stockpile. stockpile. This is basically a garbage stockpile. So any kinds of uh, remains, bones, and skin and stuff of hamsters, you see all this, these little bones here. These are all, you know, well let's take a look and see got some hamster remains, damselfly remains, things like this. So I'm going to just make stockpile. This is refuse, not refuse, but refuse, which means trash in English. Oop, and then I'm going to press escape. All right. Take out my trash pile. And then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to set a couple more real quick. So I think I'm going to need one for cloth, most likely. Oh yeah, here, I just got a error message. I don't have a distillable item. So I guess I don't have anything else I can brew right now. I'm going to have to plant and harvest some more plump elements or some other kind of plant before I can brew more liquor. Um, but let's get back to business here. I'm going to make a cloth stockpile right next to my food. I'm not trying to make this pretty, you know, Feel free to lay out your fortress however you want. This is not an optimal design. It's just easy. Um, finished goods, which is G. I'll make a stockpile over here. And then I probably need one for like bar and block. Um, maybe ammo, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it too much for right now. Cool. So I'm going to check my stocks again real quick and see what we're looking like for drinks. So good, I've got a fair amount of drinks, over 80 drinks. I've got a bit of meat. Um, in theory, I'm going to check my reports real quick and see. Yeah, no, nothing new. I should have a hunter, but maybe my hunter is not finding anything to kill around here. Um, or I might just be out of ammunition. But um, typically your, your hunter will go kill things and then uh, 
if I make like a butcher shop, I can butcher them up and have a bunch of meat. So, all right, I got about five minutes before I'm gonna wrap this up. So I'll show you real quick um, how you can make a farm. So, because this soil that we're on here is loamy sand, I think we can just plant straight on it, which is kind of nice. So I'll just illustrate real quickly um, how you build a farm plot and how you choose plants to get built on it. But uh, if you if you don't have oh, there's some fish over here. What is it? Salmon. Mmm, good fishing. Um, if you if you embark in an area that doesn't have a lot of soil, then you can actually uh, have an underground farm in to plant your mushrooms. You may have to do a little creative irrigation, and in some of the older videos I've done, I've I've shown this. But uh, my poor dog, lying at the bottom of the river there, I'm surprised the current hasn't washed him away. This is the perpetrator there. No, it's a char. Um, okay, so. Let me build up this farm plot. So again, B for build. We're gonna do. Let's see which one is it. Oh, I forgot the hot key, but it's on here somewhere. I swear. I'm gonna do a Dora the Explorer. Do you see farm plot? Where is it? Come here. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when uh, there's things you can build, you can change the size, right? So for a farm plot, it could be basically any size. So uh, you can change the height and width with U and M and K and H. So uh, U makes it taller, uh, and uh, M makes it shorter, like so. And K makes it wider, and H makes it narrower. So I'll just make a quick little uh, five by five farm plot. And since it's green, that means I can plant okay. So I don't actually need to irrigate this, which is nice. But um, I may just illustrate that at some later point because it's useful to know. Fortunately, I have a river here, so irrigation will pretty much never be a problem because I've got an unlimited supply of water. And my little farmer came, and he's building this farm plot. Okay. So now I can interact with the farm plot again with Q to set building tasks and preferences. This is considered a building um, because I built it. So here is your farm screen. I haven't messed around with fertilizer too much. Um, I know that you can use like potash or something like that to uh, to fertilize your fields, but for now we're just gonna do it the old-fashioned way. So I can select from a list of things that I want to plant in this field and I also choose what season I want to plant them in. So I just want to plant plump helmets pretty much year round. So I'm going to go through, so for spring, press A, choose plump helmets. For summer, B, go down here, choose plump helmets. C, autumn, plump helmets. D, can you guess? Plump helmets. Press escape. Bam. Year round plump helmet farm. Sounds like a, some kind of weird band. Okay, so that is my farm. And eventually, when my lazy dwarves get done eating meat straight out of the food barrels in the stockpile, they will plant me up some plump helmets. Yeah, that'll probably be it for now.